Alright guys, welcome back and today we're going to do part 2 of carnal mapping, right? So now we're going to do carnal map number F and let's see how we can circle that and how we can get into finding an equation for our carnal map F, right? So we know you have a rule 1 box, 2 box, 4 box, 8 box, okay? So let's get right into it. Now let's see, is it possible to circle 8 boxes for carnal map F? Is it possible to circle eight boxes? All right. So before, if you guys didn't know, uh, watch part one already, please go back and watch part one of Carno Maps so you know the basic rules of how to map it. And then pause this video and try and do this Carno Map by yourself first. So then you can we can match answers later on so we can improve your skills on how you can map Carno Maps by yourself. All right. So please pause this video. And then when you're done, please click resume. And then we can see if we get the right answer together. All right. Now that you guys are back, can we circle eight boxes? No, we cannot, right? So because eight boxes are unavailable, let's see if we can circle four boxes. So is it possible to circle four boxes? And yes, there's two There's two ways that we can circle four boxes, right? So if we have these three ones going down, we can include this D variable, right? So we can go down four boxes like this, right? And also we can go by four boxes horizontally like this. So there's two ways we can do four boxes. And if you guys are wondering, oh, but why can't you just circle four boxes like that? The reason why we don't circle four boxes like that is because there's a D variable here and it wasn't necessary to circle it because there's no ones that are attached to it that aren't already circled, right? So we didn't need to circle it that way. Okay. So we did not need to circle it with those four boxes, right? Because there are no, there's already multiple ones that are already circled. So we did not need to circle it vertically or horizontally. Okay. So if you go ahead and do that, let's go look at our equation F and let's do the blue circle first. Let's try and find an equation for the blue circle first. So we know how to find equations now because we watched part one. So we know that a is one here for the third row, but a is zero for the second row. So we know that a is not consistent. What about for B? We know that B is zero for the fourth row. B is one for the third row. B is not consistent, but right now we can see that C and D are consistent for the blue circle. As we can see here that C is one throughout this whole column and D is zero throughout this whole column. So those are consistent for every single one that's circled in the blue. So we can go ahead and write down for F. Our first equation is C and D. And what are we going to add that to? What about our green circle? So for our green circle, let's see what we have. For our green circle, we see that A is zero for this entire row. So we know that A is consistent, right? A bar, in fact. So A bar is consistent for this entire row. So we can go ahead and write down A bar, right? And we also know that B bar, B is it consistent because we have a B1 over here, right? That's consistent throughout this whole row. So we can go ahead and write A bar B. Right, because we know A bar is consistent and B is consistent for the horizontal row. But as you can see here, that we see C is zero for the first column, but then C is one for the third column. So C is not consistent, it's canceled. Now we can see here that D is zero for the first column and D is one for the second column. So D is not consistent as it does not say the same throughout. So then we can say D is canceled from the equation as well. So for the green circle, the equation is A bar B, right? So now that we got our first two equations down, let's see what we can do now, right? So what's another way we can circle? Now, if you guys can see here, one thing that we can also do for four is that we can circle a four box over here as well, right? So we can have a box of four over here as well, the max amount of uh, circles, the max amount of ones inside the circle, right? So we can have also have another four box over here, including this variable D to include this one that wasn't circled before, right? So let's see if we can make another equation for that black circle, right? So we can see here that A is zero for the first, for the second row of the ones. And we see that A is zero for the first row of the one and the D, right? So we know that A is zero is consistent throughout. So we can go ahead and write down A bar in the equation. What about for B? We see that B is zero for the first row, but B is one for the second row. So it's not consistent. So B is canceled. We see that C is zero for the first column, 
C is 1 for the second column for the black circle. So this column is 0, for this column it's 1. So C is cancelled as well because it's not consistent. But then we can see that D is equal to 1. Let me just erase this a little bit. We can see that D is equal to 1 for the first column and D is equal to 1 for the second column for the black circle. So D is consistent. So we can go ahead and write down A bar D. Okay? Now we need one more equation because there's one circle that's missing. This circle right here is not circle yet, right? So four cir four boxes are not being able uh, to be circled for this circle one, right? So what can we do? We're going to go down to two. And how we circle two? We're going to circle the two right over here, right? So we can circle a max of two boxes for that one to be included. And how do we make an equation for that? Well, let's take a look. A is one throughout this whole row. So we know that A is consistent, so we can go ahead and put A. We know that B is zero throughout this whole row for this whole row where the one is included. So B is zero consistent, so we can go ahead and put B bar, right? Then if you go to the top over here, just erase this real quick. If you go to the top over here, we can see that for the first column where the one is there, C is equal to one. And for the second column where the D is there with the circle, C is also equal to one. So we know that C is consistent. So we can go ahead and put C over here. Oops, let me just change that color. We can go ahead and put C over here, right, to represent that. And then what about D? We know that D is one for the first column where the one is here. And we know that D is zero for the second column where the D is there for the entire circle. So we know that D is not consistent for that red circle. So D is canceled. And then that's all we have for our cardinal map, right? So that is all the circles. All the ones are filled out for this cardinal map. Right, let me clean it up a little bit over here. So all the ones are circled for this cardinal map. And with doing this, we have four circles, four equations, and now all the ones are circled, so therefore our equation is complete. And this is our final equation for the F cardinal map. All right, so if you guys enjoyed this video and understood, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have guys have any questions, please make sure to comment down below. If you guys want me to cover any other specific questions or topics, please comment down below or email me at sharingacademy at gmail.com. All right. And then if you guys want more practice on Cardinal Maps, another example, please go forward to video number three for number G when we're going to do Cardinal Map number G. So I'll end this video out over here. And thank you guys for watching.